So what is a mathematical constant? Well, pi is the, one of the most popular ones, uh, you know, 3.141592653587 something something something. Now, how do we calculate this? Well, we know that it's the ratio of the diameter to the circumference of a circle. Three times the uh, diameter, roughly the size of the circumference of the circle. But how do you calculate that? This is a video of a story of how I participated in the, in the uh, how best to describe it, the largest by hand mathematical calculation in over 150 years to calculate this thing. So if you happen to watch some mathematics YouTube, you may have come across Matt Parker, also known as Stand Up Maths. He is an Australian former math teacher turned comedian, turned uh, educator, and he produces a lot of content on YouTube. He is very fascinated by things like pi and constants and anything to do with numbers, and he's even appeared on a few number file videos. But pi is one of the things he keeps coming back to. And every couple of years, he does uh, essentially an attempt to calculate pi by hand. Uh, this year was the third or fourth, and it's usually arranged for Pi Day, which is 314 for Americans or you know, 14th of March for everyone else. Um, but every time he's done this, it's, it's gone up in scale, in size, in complexity. Um, last time he did it two years ago, there were 50 people over two days, with the goal was to get 100 digits of pi they managed to get 13 because there was an error in the final calculation. Now, the question is, how do you, cal there's, two, there's two things I wanna cover in this video. One, how do you calculate pi? And that'll be a very uh, brief overview just because if it's a maths heavy video, you didn't come here for the maths, um, but also the logistics involved in order to do this. So let's start with the first one. Let's start with how to calculate pi by hand, by person. <laughs> So there are many different equations for the uh, formula of pi, but here's the one we're gonna use. It's, uh, it's called a Manchin-like -like formula, and it involves what are called arctans. Uh, arctan, trigonometric function, and the formula basically goes that a quarter pi equals some summation of arctans. Now, we can get rid of this and put it out here, but what I've, uh, what I've got here, so pi equals four plus a series of arctans. Now, arctans can be solved by um, a Taylor series. So the arctan of A is equal to one over A um, plus one over three A cubed minus one over five A to the five. And the common denominator here is that if we put a one here and a one, um, these go up in twos. So you end up with an equation that is basically, how do you calculate this? And I appreciate my handwriting is god awful. And you do that through a process of long division, um, but it's not really long division. Promise me, uh, promise, stay with me on this. So let, let's bring this up here. How do, you, how do you calculate this summation? Well, let's start with one over a. If you divide it by a squared, you get one over a cubed. You can divide that by a squared again, and you get one over a to the five. Now, if you take this number and divide by three, you get one over three a cubed. If you take this number and divide by five, you get one over five a to the power of five. And what we have here is a parallel series of operations. What you have here is what we refer to on the day as a trunk, where all you're doing is dividing by a squared. And then on top of that, you have the leaves, where all you're dividing by is three, five, then seven, then nine. Very easy um, divisions to do. And the problem here is when a 
is a number like 390,112. And then you have to divide by the square of that. This is where long division comes in. Um, we did it ridiculously easy. What you do is you pre-compute your multiplication table, um, and then it's just a series of match it up and subtraction. But the whole point, that's by the by. I can do a different video on that. The whole point is, if you have a series of people working on these divisions, as you do the first 20 digits of this calculation, you can then do the 20 digits in this calculation. When you have the 20 digits of, say, a cubed, you can then do the first 20 digits of the divide by 3. And so you have a number of parallel operations, which means if you have people, you can scale this out. Now, on the day, that, that is the briefest overview of how to cal calculate pi, very badly explained. But what we did on the day is we had, uh, oh, it wasn't a day, it's Matt hired a school hall for a week in the centre of London, and there were over 350 volunteers, 300 to 350. And the goal was to see if we can beat the current world record of pi by hand by William Shanks, which is around 580 digits. It was done by him over the course of decades, so we had to try and do it in a week. And there were simple rules. No calculators, no watches, no phones. Nothing digital was allowed in our calculation. So we had people doing times tables, we had people doing long division or simple division. On top of that, we had to do mathematical checks to make errors. If you've ever done a calculation, you thought this is right, but unfortunately there's an error because you've not carried the right number down or you've mistaken a multiple, um, it gets very complex. So in order to get this to work and in order for everything to work, I mean, so on the day we ended up with six different arctans because the equation that we went with, that provided enough parallel operation for everybody to, uh, to use. Each, each division, each long division, went out three times. We had an A, a B, and a C. And the point is, if you've got a, uh, you, you distribute work by three. This is distributed workload. If anyone has ever used Boink or SETI, this is how this works. And if two of them match, the idea is that that's the result. If you have A, B, and C, and none of them match, you send out D and E and you keep sending them out. I think at one point we were at J, um, just because the same division got so many answers from the people doing it. Um, then on top of this, we had a phantom division, which would do alpha, beta, gamma. This was just random checks to make sure the digits at any point in any calculation considered done was correct. That means that if there's an error further down the line, maybe it can be caught. We also had um, a feature of what they call mod 9, mod 11. This is additional more complex checks to make sure we're on the right path. Um, but the whole point is that at the end of five days, at the end of 350 people, you would have a calculation which was basically pi equals some number x plus some number y. And at the final day, we just go all the way through to make sure and try and get as many digits as possible. Now, unfortunately, so, so um, I volunteered Monday, Tuesday, or um, no, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, but it went all the way to Sunday. Unfortunately, I had to fly out to San Francisco on the Saturday. Um, but on the Sunday, they did this final summation to get this many digits in order to beat the record. Now we're talking 350 people here, eight hours a day for a week. So that's what, almost 20,000 hours of actual work time. Imagine that at minimum wage. Um, and if I've managed to get the final um, B-roll in time uh, from that, we achieved 139 digits. No. Three point one.
four, one, five, nine, two, six, five, three, five, eight, nine, seven, nine, three, two, three, eight, four, six, two, six, four, three, three, eight, three, two, seven, nine, five, zero, two, eight, eight, four, one, nine, seven, one, six, nine, three, nine, nine, three, seven, five, one, zero, five, eight, two, zero, nine, seven, four, nine, four, four, five, nine, two, three, zero, seven, eight, one, six, four, zero, six, two, eight, six, two, zero, eight, nine, nine, eight, six, two, eight, zero, three, four, eight, two, five, three, four, two, one, one, seven, zero, six, seven, nine, eight, two, one, four, eight, zero, eight, six, five, one, Three two eight two three zero six six four seven zero nine three eight four four six zero nine five five zero five eight two two three one. Yep. yep. No. Seven. Yes. No. Oh, that's it! It was insanely fun. I mean, Matt did a really great job, in, uh, and Matt and his team, uh, compliments to people like Nicole, Alien, Alex, um, Scroggs, and um, sorry, I forget your name with the purple hair. Um, it was amazing to see just how many um, maths and computational nerds who watch Matt and obviously watch Number File um, really got into this and people were asking for work, people were asking for things to do. Um, some people think of long division as mind numbing. I mean, the way I do it means it's not really division, it's more like addition. Um, and it was just very therapeutic for me, insane. So I did actually get a chance to interview Matt um, in traditional, you know, me style. So uh, we spent some time um, in, in the viewing area, in the hall we were in, and I got to ask him a few questions. Hopefully this has all come out and it's, and it's all good. So our plan here is to calculate as many digits of pi as possible, but very importantly, we're trying to do it entirely by hand with no calculation aids. For two reasons. Number one, no one's done it in 150 years. So we're very keen to beat the previous record by hand. I don't want to give any spoilers away about if that's going to happen. Uh, but m more than that, I feel like when you do something by hand, you get an insight into the mathematics that you don't get if a computer's doing it for you. So there's something very... Tactile's not the word, there's the, the calculation version of tactile. You really get to know pi when you're under the hood doing it yourself. The setup we've gone for, and this is completely by accident, has a convergently evolved to something more like a processor you'd normally have on the channel, but this is like a much, much slower analog version where we've got individual chunks of calculations that are 20 digits each. Each is on an A4 piece of paper and there's different systems for handing them out, getting them calculated, the actual computing, get them checked, double checked, and then the information that we now have needs to be fed into other calculations that are waiting to happen. And it's a big complex cascading calculation which gradually spits out digits of pi. My previous attempts have increased by about an order of magnitude every time. So I do this every two years. It was just me and then it was me and like four people and then it was me and 20 or 30 people and now it's me and 200 people. It's way more complex. I think we're going to get more digits than ever. I think we'll get more digits than anyone else has done for at least a century. 
Whereas pre like two years ago, we got 11. So we're hoping to get a hundred, maybe more. So hopefully an order of magnitude bigger will give us an order of magnitude more digits. The biggest issue is absolutely logistical. With our previous attempts, we were more focusing on what good formula to use and how to do the mathematics. When we've hit this scale, there's not an economy of scale, there's the opposite. We've now got over 10,000 bits of paper that need to be tracked, updated, corrected, moved around. So just the logistics of having a global view of where every bit of paper should be and finding ones that get lost or misplaced or are critical ones that need to be prioritized has just been an absolute, very complex nightmare. I think we will succeed in getting a lot of digits of pi. We have a bonus team we've never had before who are doing additional mathematical checks on every step of the calculation where they're doing, they're doing like a modular arithmetic shortcut version of it to make sure that works as a way to flag up errors that have made it through every other check. And they found, they've now checked thousands of pages and they found two additional mistakes. If they weren't there, those two mistakes would have gone into the final answer. They found those two. Obviously, we don't know if there are other ones they haven't found. If they'd found zero, I would have been like, amazing. E either they're totally useless or they're, they're comprehensive. Or, or, or no mistakes are getting that far. We now know at least two mistakes got that far and we got them. I'm hoping there were none that made it through there. If they do, while well, disappointing now, that will inform future iterations of this process. I would like to thank so many people for making this happen. We have like a Pi Day Council. So Katie Steckles, who has a fantastic YouTube channel as well about mathematics, has been uh, absolutely essential in putting this together. We've then got Matt Scroggs from the Chalk Dust people, Elian McDonald, who does both. She has number file and she does her own YouTube and her own uh, TikTok. And Sophie McLean has done a load of work on this too. And Sophie did a number file video for people who like watching number file. And uh, producer Nicole, uh, the, the production required to not only do this as an event, but produce the fact that there's like now two of us here making YouTube videos about it has been incredible. So uh, Nicole's done a lot. As this has been going on, I have been wondering about what we do next. Because I do it every two years, it'll be 2026. If people want to sign up to volunteer, uh, check, out my, uh, check out my YouTube page. I am uncertain if we need like the optimal number of people, but for a lot longer. Or do we need more people? I, I don't know which, I feel like the time dimension is the one we're gonna have to expand on, not the volume of humans dimension. At least for what we're doing, to the extent we've got to, we've not been short of computational power, but we are just, we haven't got enough time to get it done. The biggest error, in terms of individual mistakes that have made it through, uh, two people, both made identical mistakes independently doing the same calculation. So one was doing the main, one was doing the redundant one. They both had to divide 17 by three. And instead of writing the correct answer five, they both, they both correctly put 15 as the biggest multiple that fits. And they both wrote three. They wrote the wrong part of the, the multiplication. But the, the mod team caught that. The biggest error if I define that as a systematic issue, is that each additional digit gets harder. So the early ones are easy and the difficulty increases in a linear fashion. So the more ambitious we are, the difficulty just ramps up. I have caught several of my own mistakes. I realized I had to dial up my checking before I hand in the sheets. Because one approach is just do the calculation and get it in the system quickly and then the, the checking will find any mistakes. The other approach is take a lot longer, do your own checks, be a lot more confident, then hand it in. We've realized the latter is the more efficient. So I'm now doing way more checks and I caught uh, two mistakes.
last time I did a full, and these are big long divisions, uh, but I, there were two mistakes that would have made it through if I wasn't doing additional checks. Matt embodies one of the things that I try to get across on this channel. Um, and you know, I do sponsor content and all that stuff as well. But the point is that there are so many things uh, in, in science, in technology, in engineering, in maths, um, that are so amazingly interesting to get to grips with, to understand, realizing the beauty of some of this stuff underneath. Um, I do it, so Matt does it in maths, I do it mostly in silicon um, and with a focus on AI right now, but I, you know, I also do it in quantum and standard CPUs and stuff. It's being able to tell those stories, being able to try things, especially with what Matt's doing here, and you know, whatever happens in a couple of years when he wants to do um, a, a bigger calculation. Um, it, if you love this sort of thing, it, it's, it, it's, it's bread and butter, and it's, it's what gets you up in the morning. None of that hustle and bustle, but just the love, the raw love of the underlying beauty of the maths, of the physics, of the silicon. And yeah, it's why I get up in the morning and I hope you have similar reasons for why you get up in the morning as well. Thank you to Matt and the Stand Up Maths team uh, for having us all out there. Uh, Emma uh, Iwal, the, uh, the uh, person from Google who has the record, the computational record as the time I'm fielding this. Sorry, Jordan. Um, she was also there. She flew in from Seattle. We had people flying in from all over the world. I think there are a couple of South Americans as well who came in literally just for this event in you know, maybe a few days in London and a few days in, um, in Edinburgh as well. That sort of thing, uh, large concentration in the UK, people coming in from Germany. Uh, it also just happened to be you know, midterm for the university students. Uh, so a lot of those came in, all walks of life, all sorts of people, technology. There's even a guy there called Pi, and that is his birth name. Um, if I, I did take a video with him, if I can dig it out, I'll, I'll, I'll show me waving and say, look, he's, this guy's called Pi. Um, he actually was, he's, he had a mainstay in the library and that was, that was quite fun, having to hand out you know, uh, times tables, but the 390,112 squared timetable. Um, yeah, love this sort of stuff. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this very short uh, video on it and uh, yeah, if you don't know who Matt Parker is and you're interested, go find the Stand Up Maths channel and go and subscribe there. Um, and of course, Number File, everybody knows Number File. If you're not subscribed, go do it. Um, and if you enjoyed this, subscribe to me too. What the hell? <laughs>